kindly take your seats and either switch off your mobile phones or put them on silent. Uh, participants of this session are um, the uh, Rumana Hussain and Haris Ghazdar. Um, Haris Ghazdar works on social policy and political economy issues. He runs the think, the think tank, uh, the Collective for Social Science Research, established in 2001. This, uh, the total duration of the session is uh, half an hour. We would appreciate if complete silence is observed while the session is in progress. A question and answer session will be held at the end. Please raise your hands and the microphone will be brought to you. Please keep your questions short and precise and refrain from making a statement. Okay. Thank you very much and uh, welcome all of you. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Romana Hossein. Um, and uh, this session, let me just actually say something about the session and then I'll talk about Romana and how we want to go. Uh, this session was built as a book launch, but actually the book that we will discuss uh, has been around for some time. It is a very important book and therefore it's actually worth discussing again. Um, and I hope that a number of you have already seen it, read it, and if not, then you will go out and buy it now. Romana is the director on the board of the Children's Literature Festival. She is the author of a book, this, this book that we'll discuss today, Karachi Wala Up Subcontinent Within a City which was published by JAL in 2010. She's co-founded Nukta Art in 2005, which is a biannual art magazine, of which she is a senior editor. And she has, she has a lot of accomplishments to her name. And what is interesting about Romana is that she has at least four different career paths that seem to merge. So she's, uh, she's been a school head, she's a teacher trainer, an illustrator, and of course a writer. And I think that um, I won't say uh, much about the book except that I, I want to say that there's something of a parallel between your multiple career paths and I think how I see your book. Uh, and we'll have, I think you, you'll speak briefly about the book and then I think there's a presentation, there's an audio, there's a video presentation. Uh, yes, Salaam Alaikum. Um, audio to uh, hum dono ka hai. <laughs> but uh, uh, visuals are there and I just thought it might be a good idea to uh, begin uh, with the book, uh, just you know, run through a few pages so that you, uh, those who have not been through the book, they just get an idea and it sort of literally sets the stage okay. for both of us to talk about it. All right. So what I, let me just it. actually give you my pointers about how I see this book and its significance. It's a very beautiful book and it can be uh, mm -hmm. mistaken for a coffee table book. I would say it can be mistaken for a coffee pit. I think part of its marketing was that it should be, it should adorn uh, coffee tables in Karachi and elsewhere. Yeah. But I think that uh, that is just one of the three careers of that book. I think the book also has three careers, <laughs> at least. So one is that it is, it is a very beautiful book and it qualifies very well. As a coffee table book, it has illustrations, uh, it, it is aesthetically very pleasing, and it answers to Romana's own career uh, as an artist. But there is another aspect to the book that is also very interesting, and that is that it has um, very valuable narratives. So it has beautiful, it is a very beautiful book, but it's also very va valuable because it has, uh, it gives you an insight into different narratives about the city and different narratives about communities and different narratives about individuals. And those narratives, they form a very rich tapestry into what goes into being what I think is a modern city. But I think that the third career of this book is perhaps the most interesting. And that is that uh, in a way, this very beautiful and valuable book is also a dangerous book. So this book, its third career is that of being a dangerous book in that it's a very subversive book. It's a subversive book because it celebrates identities, not one identity. So it documents, documents well and beautifully identities of individuals, families and communities for whom Karachi is their home, hence the Karachi Wala. But its subversion lies in the fact that it challenges a number of powerful 
politically powerful identities. So identity, as you've heard in various sessions uh, today, and as you know, identity is uh, something very powerful in politics. And right now, uh, no matter where you stand in Pakistan in terms of your political views, identity is a very crucial issue. And what this book does is that it subverts some very powerful notions of identity that are used in order to uh, promote certain political agendas. So this book is a very subtle indictment of um, you know, notions of identity that are built around the nation state. So nation states, they tend to uniformize people. They say that you know, we are uniform, we are one, and this is how we look. And th what this book says is that it's, it's telling you a great deal of detailed difference, and it's showing you that, that there's no threat in that difference. The second uh, thing it does is that it challenges these meta-narratives of uh, identities around religion. That people of a particular religion, they are the proper citizens, and you know, this is what we, uh, what we are. So it's challenging that. So it's basically taking the focus away from some kind of a photo fit of what it is to be a Pakistani, a Karachi citizen, or a Muslim, and it's giving you many, many different accounts without uh, forcing you to judge anybody. The third thing that, that it does very interestingly in the context of Karachi is that it's raising this issue of a Karachi wala or a Karachi wali that is not bound to ethnicity. So ethnicity is important in the book, but so is religion, so is uh, culture, so are many, many different things. But ethnicity or any given notion of ethnicity any constructed notion of ethnicity around which very powerful politics are done, violent politics are done, I think this book ultimately subverts that. So I think that the third career of the book, which is as a, it's a, actually a dangerous subversive book, because this very beautiful, uh, I would say soft narrative, has now met the hard politics of Karachi. And I think that it's producing some very, very interesting energies. So with that, I think that I'll hand over to Romana. Uh, I think you want to show some... Yes, I do, but I also want to say that um, the book was uh, launched in 2010 and finally somebody like Harris has read the subtext, that it is a subversive book and that is by intention. Uh, because, you know, it shows us a mirror, it shows that um, we are all different and hey, let's celebrate this difference, you know. We don't want to be clones of each other. And that was my entire purpose of doing this book, that in this wonderful city of Karachi, which people love to hate, um, you know, we have all this amazing diversity. And though I was born in Karachi, grew up here, have lived here for uh, 60 plus years, I... Um, even I didn't, I, I, I thought I knew, um, you know, all these people, this, uh, these different communities uh, who live here. But uh, once I started going into their homes and talking to them, I realized that I didn't know enough. I just knew, um, I, I thought I knew, but I didn't. So uh, it, it aims to, you know, document um, all these people. Anyway, let's, let's take a look at the diversity that we are talking about. Food, yes, and Bans Road. That's a Baha'i home. Uh, I mean, uh, Anaza Khana. That's the Swami Narayan Mandir. That's uh, the Zoroastrian symbol. And Aga Khan Jamaat Khana, 
<clears throat> that's a Baloch woman. That's um, a Hindu home in EI Lines. Um, Lata from the same place. The Jogis. The Khwaja Saras. Uh, these are the languages that uh, all these people in my book uh, were speaking. The, the top part in this um, diagram shows all those languages and the bottom um, shows the ones that are now spoken because many uh, languages have been lost. Uh, that's a ring worn by this uh, uh, Baha'i lady uh, which uh, is always worn. Um, because it's part of their uh, burial ritual. Uh, a Parsi home would always have this fire burning. Uh, the Vagris, they are, um, they were the poorest of the poor that I met. Um, these are women from uh, Junagar and they where they are dressed in red all their lives. Um, yes. That's a Maiman family from Bantua. Um, these, this is a Pathan family from hailing from Suat originally. Um, this is uh, the Swaminarayan uh, temple on Bandar Road. Um, I visited it during Diwali. Um, that's a Tamil uh, Christian lady. Um, this was a Mela at St. Anthony's. And yes, again, that's the Baha'i family. Uh, that's Ramesh uh, belonging to the Sikh community. Um, that's a Parsi family and uh, Naujot ceremony. Uh, this... Uh, is a group of men who live out in the open, you know. They are single men who uh, come from the northern parts of the country and uh, uh, their li lives are just spent <clears throat> in the open. Yes. Um, uh, this family is from uh, uh, Chinyot. Um, yes, uh, this is... Um, um, a Bihari gentleman living in Orangi town. That's um, an Afghan uh, refugee with his two wives. Yes, and that's a fisher folk in Ibrahim Hedri. Um, a Chinese family, uh, you know, the uh, ancestors, the great grandfather came and settled in Pakistan. Um, that's a, a, a Tamil lady, Roman Catholic, that's a Goan gentleman and his wife and daughter. That's um, the Jews who are now no more. Um, and that's the last chapter of my book. So uh, these are the Kumhars in Liari, um, not the Potter Kumhars, but the Kumhars who are bone setters. And that's a Baloch woman who um, came to his clinic while I was there uh, for treatment. And, uh, okay, it's just a truck. Yeah. Abu Rajamat Khana. That's uh, Goan. That's a Mela. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's... Um, um, uh, sorry, forget, forget his name. But he is a Maheshwari, uh, a Maheshwari Hindu. And that's um, a temple in Bhimpura, inside of the temple. That's EI lines, they are sweepers. Yes, yes. Yes, you can run faster. 
Okay, that's another Hindu family. That's uh, Deepak Parvani, the fashion designer, and his mother, Renu. Yes. A Parsi family. That's uh, the Chinese, uh, Kenneth Chu. Yes, keep going. Yes, that's, I think, that, that, is that all? Yeah? What's that? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, okay. so there yeah. we are. <clears throat> okay, so can I ask you what is, uh, what was behind, what was the main impulse that drove you into, because this, this really is, uh, it's, it's a very, it's, it looks like a labor of love, it looks like effort that's gone in over years and years. Not years and years. I did it in two years. I left my job and I um, just focused on this book and I worked, my, my husband is sitting here, he would uh, vouch for it. I worked for at least 18 hours a day, every day uh, on the book. And, you know, uh, because I was, it was a face-to-face um, -face with each of these families or individuals or communities. And I was visiting their homes, so um, I could not impose on them. I had to take into account what was a suitable time for them to meet me. And these were extensive interviews and... Uh, uh, sometimes just uh, one visit was not enough, so I had to go again. Um, or I wanted to attend uh, uh, an event of their family or, you know, some uh, other um, event associated to that uh, particular ethnic community or religious community. Um, therefore, it required that sort of time. Um, so, yes, uh, labor of love, you can call it, because, uh, but the impulse that you talk about, I uh, have written in the foreword of the book that uh, right uh, from my childhood, I just felt that what was being taught to us in schools through our textbooks um, was not quite true. And we were not only Sindhis, Punjabis, Baloch, and Pathans, or, and Bengalis at that time. Um, there were, you know, so many other people. Uh, they lived around me, they were my classmates, and uh, I just felt that nobody ever talks about them, about all these other languages that are spoken in this city, about all these... Uh, costumes that people wear or the cuisines, the different cuisines that are part of uh, those communities. Um, and also when I was doing the book, I realized that um, uh, there are so many traditional um, uh, professions uh, that, are pra that have been practiced in this country and um, uh, many of them are also informed by their, uh, like, they, they become a community. So if you have um, the, the butchers, the kasab, they are a community. Uh, the kumhars are a community, the potters, uh, or the dhobi, they are a community. Uh, so, uh, th therefore, you know, I, when I was making my wish list and I was putting all the communities that I wanted to cover, Unfortunately, I haven't been able to. There are 64 stories here, and I would say roughly maybe 40 communities. But uh, once again, that's not all. There are many. I can't claim that I have covered them all. And I keep, uh, um, you know, initially I, I did receive a few brickbats that you did not cover the Kashmiris. Where are the Baltis? Where are, you know, so there are many more living in this city that I was unable to find or, or didn't, uh, you know, maybe make enough effort to cover them. Uh, I also wanted to do the Ahmadi community, for example, but uh, and that I did find a few people, but uh, they refused to be a part of the book, and understandably so. I can't blame them. Okay. So this, uh, the, um, it's very interesting that you mentioned certain forms of identity 
that limit our our vision of the city mm-hmm. you mentioned these major ethnic groups that are part of pakistan and what is interesting is that if you look at uh, like a, a major state project mm-hmm. uh, in pakistan which documents the population so something like the census so it also reports on certain language groups and um, you might be aware that karachi is one place where this category of other shows up as having a very large uh, proportion of the population so i think that something like 12 to 13% of the population of the city is classified as other so But not the, the demography um, haris was uh, really problematic for me because i just i mean we all know that we have not had census for what 18 years now something like that 1996 so you know we we just uh, and i was doing this book in two, uh, 2000 and from 2008 to 2010 this was released in 2010 and uh, the figures i could only go by what was um, maybe a calculated kind of you know statistics but uh, nothing authentic or what those community members themselves gave out so um because in uh, we we in the absence of a census we can't say that yes these figures are right true okay when did you know that you had enough material to now complete your project so we know that it started with this impulse that there were people all around you that we didn't know much about hmm. so when did you think that okay now i have enough and because as you know and as you acknowledge that you can carry on you can go further there are so many groups right. and wherever you look there are more groups and more identities to explore so so when did when was that moment when you thought that okay now i have to stop now um uh, i had a um i had a deadline my own deadline because uh, i had to complete it it had to be printed it had to be released because you know my children Uh, who have been away from home for many many years they were going to be uh, home uh, during that particular month and i wanted and my daughter uh, who is sitting here she is visiting she is an architect um, she uh, came home for a summer and she designed the book so the physical beauty of the book that you talk about the credit is entirely hers um i uh, interviewed i i wrote the chapters i also did the photography because uh, you know i'm not a professional photographer uh, but uh, there, there was no other way that i could have done this i had to do it myself uh, otherwise i mean the costs uh, would have been enormous and also no photographer would have uh, tagged along with me day and night for two years you know doing this so anyway uh, 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 i had to uh, like i said that i just felt okay this is it i have i have done these you know 64 uh, 63 were the actual uh, you know that i i went and met these people um, and uh, the last uh, chapter about on the jews um, that was the one that of course i failed to um, to find any uh so this was uh, done only by email i mean it was the most difficult chapter for me to do because i could not find anybody who would uh talk about the jews and i just happened to read an article on the internet and i uh, contacted uh, the person who wrote it because you know his email address was there and i didn't realize he was the editor in chief of the jerusalem post so i wrote to him and um, he replied almost instantly and he said you know i'll print this in my newspaper uh, your your query uh, so and he did that i mean uh, I, within two days i think he printed that letter and then i started getting some responses and uh, zivia epstein the lady i have featured uh she uh, in fact even her parents were born in karachi um she went to school here she went to the uh, karachi university here uh her father was the deputy engineer of the kpt the karachi port trust and uh, similarly i got and and that was really exciting for me i got uh, uh, emails from um, architect moses sumake's uh, granddaughters 
uh, who were as excited when I told them that uh, their grandfather's buildings still stand in Karachi and they just couldn't believe it because uh, Moses Sumake, um, the first uh, architect of Karachi who uh, designed um, uh, the Flagstaff House, who designed uh, the Goan Association Hall, who designed uh, uh, Edward House, uh, Mule's Mansion, uh, the BVS uh, Parsi School. Uh, he left India in 1922. Mm -hmm. And these granddaughters live in Australia and in Vancouver. Uh, so, you know, they were uh, very excited and they sent me material. So, basically, in that chapter, I'm only talking about the Jews. Right. who lived in Karachi once upon a time but are no more. And even if there are some still living, they are probably going as, you know, some other okay. uh, faith, yes. So I, I'm, I'm told that we don't have that much time because the next book session is about to start. Do we have some time for a few questions? Yes. Okay. So if there are a few questions, we can just take one or two and then uh, Romana can answer them and then we'll have to push on. Um, yeah, gentlemen, there. Uh, and my neighbors were Jewish, and he worked for Shell, and his name was Mr. Robin, but actually his name was Mr. Rabin, and his two yes. daughters uh, were our friends. Sylvia and, and Gloria. Okay, thank you. Okay. Nilofer, yes. It's there. Thank you, um, Nilofa Faro. Romana, um, you've written this wonderful book, and we as Karachiites really have discovered so many communities that we don't interact on a daily basis with. You know, Really, we would like to see it being integrated into the school curricula because it is very important that um, we have this kind of material taught to young children right from the beginning that how rich their city is and how they need to be proud of it. So uh, uh, you who've been a teacher and are involved with the um, children's festival, have you looked at any programming that could sort of be done around the book? <laughs> because, uh, I mean, if you are thinking of influencing the government and asking them to, you know, I think it's such a radical step for them. Um, I don't see it happening, at least in my lifetime. Uh, it's um, the private schools who could do this. And when I was heading a school, I was associated with a school, private school for 10 years. Uh, in my own capacity as the head of the school, I did do this, what ultimately has happened uh, in the shape of the book. Um, and, you know, we uh, would invite um, parents or grandparents from different communities to talk about uh, their religion, their lifestyle. I would encourage them to bring certain artifacts from home. Uh, we would uh, uh, take students for trips to a temple, a church, a mosque, you know. So uh, in that capacity, I mean, I, I, I could do that. But I think um, uh, for our education system to adopt something like this, uh, it could be done at college level, probably. I don't know about the schools, but uh, no, but seriously, we haven't really tried anything now. Okay. okay, thank you so much. I've been told now that we have to vacate it for the next one. Okay. So thank you very much. Thanks, thank Mana. You. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We have the next session, which continues. I'd like to ask if you would like to stay for that, please. Our next session.